Please share the information provided in this video. Always remember the crucial part of removing a person's confusion is understanding his or her unique source of it. Okay, so today we're putting an auxiliary input on a radio, but this is an instructional video for generically doing it on pretty much a generic car radio. Okay, this is a hack. This is not for some, and this is also not for someone who has like a lot of knowledge. You don't have to be like a technology wizard to do this. This is assuming you know how to take your radio out, take it apart and solder onto a circuit board and basic stuff like that so anyway I'm gonna show you this is a Pioneer that I did it on and I, I did this technique on this Pioneer radio and listened to it for years and years and years and so here's the the PCB board that uh, came out of it as I come over here um, this is where the radio antenna goes in and they're gonna have typically on these a little metal box like this or something like that and uh, I saw I did a Dodge Neon the other week and it worked on there too and it had the piece of, it had the tuner box like laid flat across there but there'll be like a column of pins can you see these pins okay and uh, on this board it was really easy because you can see right there do you can you see that it says LCH so that's left channel and that's RCH right channel and then there's a ground you can ground it wherever you need to ground it I pulled what I did off of there I had little I had you know the audio input soldered there so literally it's just like your headphone jack to your mp3 player and you put the right there and the, and you put the I mean right there left there and the ground on the ground okay now the thing is what if you don't have a board that's labeled like this so that's what we're gonna look at today and how to do that we're gonna do it come on out here okay so this is the truck here that we're doing this is a Toyota Tacoma what model is it Jacob what year is it you know 98 I think really okay. well, anyway, uh, 99 um, not sure in here, it's the stock radio in here and just get a little shot of that it's like a cassette um, Slash radio. And then come on over here. I've used this technique on this dot, uh, this Nissan Sentra. Same technique. And we're going to try to see if it works for us. You know, just aux input going in through the radio tuner. So, you know, on the radio, there's the tuner, and then it goes to the part of the radio that amplifies. And so we go in in between there. We plug this in, and we just hear the sound, and it sounds good. Okay, so. This should be generic and useful on a variety of uh, radios, and so we're going to demonstrate it today. If your car or your radio tears up, it's not my fault. All right, All right. here's the radio slash tape deck pulled out. It's got that big fake front. I think there's room for like a CD burner. We're going to take it apart and see if we can get in. On this. Okay. Um, this is the radio mostly disassembled. We've got the tape deck out, got the face plate off, and uh, here is our little metal box. All right, here's the antenna input. So that means that, you know, basically the antenna comes in, the radio tuner box does what it has to do to tune into a radio station, and then it's going to go to these chips and three resistors and things to amplify it. So we want to find where on this column of pins that's coming from the radio tuner box where on here is the just the basic right and left sound okay and so as you can see there are no labels on here so this will be a good test for my technique for doing this alright so the first thing we gotta do before we even start is we need to find out which pins are ground so you take your multimeter and I've got a multimeter set to resistance um, with the with uh, tone on no resistance so it tones okay and I just want to figure out which pins coming out of the tuner are ground because coming out of the tuner will be pre-amplified right and left sound just like your headphone jack would put into an amp okay pre-amplified right and left and then a ground so first thing we got to find is ground well the ground pins are ground is going to be you know for example like anything big like that you know is already grounded okay we just need to know which pins on here go to ground so that one goes number one alright there's a bunch of them so this may take a while 
Okay, here's the radio, and here's how we have it set up to uh, be turned on outside the car. I've got it here, and if you can see right here, this wire here is soldered to this pin here. If you can see that, this pin here and this pin here. We went to installdoctor.com and it tells you the the pin out for you know the plugs on the back where they go for the different cars and uh, you use your continuity meter to figure out what pin goes to what you know where on the board I just saw it, I just soldered in because it wasn't that hard and then over here we soldered to a left and right speakers got some little cheapo speakers from my brother's old stereo and uh, they're just like you have a left and a right so that you can make sure that you've got the left and right channels working so again just soldered those in to the left and right on here any you know left and right front or left and right back or whatever just so that you have left and right going and then the ground I hooked there and then I got power just from a computer a uh, thing you know that would like on a desktop that would power like a hard drive or something the yellow wire on these is 12 volt positive I forget what the red is I think it's 5 volt positive and the blacks are grounds and just twisted the tips of these over and just shoved them in there to get the 12 volt positive so in a second and we'll power it up just so you know uh, on this uh, Toyota Tacoma it was easy Cause like that's you know right side up and the bottom just kind of popped off and it was easy to get to so you didn't really actually have to remove the tape deck from inside there but you can power these up if you've got to remove that for some reason with it removed like I well I did the Dodge Neon that I did the other wood day and I had the CD player uh, you know thing out of there and uh, it, the radio part powered up fine Okay, so we've connected the power, and uh, this thing, you know, turns on. We can crank up the volume, get the sound out of this speaker, get the sound out of this speaker. But what you do at this point is, if you remember, this column of pins that will be on the radio um, where the antenna comes in from the back. On this one, it's here and uh, goes to a little metal box that tunes into a particular channel and basically it's going to send a preamp right and left out and a ground on this one found a, numerous ground pins with a continuity meter just touching the pin and you know the other end of the meter to you know known ground and I think it was one and the number eight pin and then it was the one on this end and the number three from this end so at any rate, once you know your grounds, you've got to set up. I made a little tool here. Let me pull this stuff out of the way. Okay. And this is my phone set up as an MP3 player. Let's uh, pull out this little thing. So, this is just a real simple little tool. Um, like an old phone cable solder to RCA, whatever. Basically, gives me I've got the ends of the wires this little white wire goes to the to the ground on here and then I forget which one needs to see there the right or the left positive audio feed goes to the red as long as I have an audio feed you know able to run out of this thing ground and audio feed okay so what we do is we connect it to something to play your songs on. Alright, that's playing but it's since this thing picked up it won't can't hear anything. But anyway, hopefully. And so what you do is you you touch your ground line, which in my case is this little white one, to a known ground and then just you poke the red one around. And I, I put some solder on the tips of these so that they'll be kind of stiff and pokey. And uh 
you basically go to you hear some sound you gotta try different grounds and uh, so we'll do this and uh, I'll let you okay so I've got the little tool playing and uh, I'm gonna come down here and I've poked around so I'm just gonna show you what I found and what I got was when I touched this to this little pin right here which was a known ground and then that's the third from that end is how I was doing it and then to the number five let me turn the audio up let me turn it a little louder here okay let me touch number three and this one Wait, that's number four there we go it's coming through that speaker over there that's the left channel And they're coming through that speaker. Left. Right. Left. Right. Sounds pretty good. We were for some reason the Braves game was coming through there before it was picking up that. And whenever I plugged it in, it would overtake the Braves game. On some of these other pins, the sound wasn't as good, but I was getting it. And sometimes it would sound good, but it would be with the Braves game. I just tried different things so I got something to sound good. So now what we're going to do is hook this up to, you know, our headphones jack. I can, you can cut it off. All right, so this is some headphones. We bought the cheapest headphones we could find, which are $4 from Big Lots. Um, and uh, what we're going to do is cut off these speakers. And each one of these wires is going to have a ground and a right feed and a positive and a, and a left feed in the other one and a ground in the other one. And uh, so I'm going to do that now. But four dollars because that was cheapest we could find. Okay. Here's the headphone wires ready to go. Um, these wires. This has got to be really hard to see there, but you can see I've got them and I tin the tips. They run them in there without, yeah, without insulation. Oh, that was, thank you, Jacob. Without insulation, um, so that when they touch, they won't even short circuit to one another. The cool thing about that is, is you just solder the tip on to the node, and you don't have to worry about crossing to any other nodes in there, any other soldered points. All right, so this one had a copper in each, and then a red and a blue in, in one and the other. So the red and blue was obviously positive negative feed and then the copper is obviously common. And to check to make sure when you when you strip these there's just like little tiny strands you've got to twist together and then you've got to have a good hot clean soldering iron to solder to tin these tips because these guys they're not easy to solder. So what we're gonna do now hold the camera Jacob and I'll show them this. Um we're gonna take the Continuity meter, ohm meter, whatever that's a uh, tone on continuity, and just check and see if we crossed any of these. So, what do you see back up? Oh, uh, right there. Okay. okay, set the continuity. It's showing weak continuity to one of the grounds, but that's probably going to be okay. You don't have to use both ground wires. But the main thing is that the positive and negative feeds do not short to the ground. And then we'll okay, we've got soldered in. You have to be careful you don't jump to the wrong thing or something. Um, and I'm going to take some hot glue and just go over that to make sure it stays. You obviously want to test it, so we're going to connect to the phone and cut it on. Let's get the radio is on now. And now, let's see. Okay. 
okay? That's good. Alright. I forgot to say before that uh, I had better uh, results on the Dodge Neon running on FM radio. This one, that's FM. That's AM. I mean, it's not a huge difference. So, you know, play around with it. Alright, and there it is with the hot glue on it. And now what we're going to do is kind of tape this to, this wire to the side. Or nylon tight somewhere maybe. And, uh, you know, put it back in the car and we'll see. Alright, here we are. It's working in the Toyota Tacoma, 99 Toyota Tacoma. And I just ran the wire out right there. But a favorite one it seems. She began to cry. You hear a little bit of buzz, but that's probably with the song. Yeah. Okay. And then just to show how it works, we'll come over here to the 99 Nissan Central. And this one's playing through here. And the wire runs in like right here. Stock radio. working so and then we come over here to junior's car and uh, the dodge neon what year is this year 2004 dodge neon okay and i just ran the wire out with the f same four dollar headphones set up stock dodge chrysler set up and uh some of these will get a buzz when you're trying to charge it and run the sound at the same time. It does over in that Sentra. I don't know about the Tacoma yet. This car doesn't for some reason. And unplug it right quick. Okay, so it goes back. And like we could like go to radio. Alright, I just plug it in. And that's how it works. Alright. That's... That's how we do it. Okay, now this is the, what is it, is Joe, what is it, what year is it, Joey? 2003. 2003, 2003 Saturn VU. And I decided we're going to go ahead and do aux input install on this one too. So, we're going to get the radio out. Uh, remember, you just go to YouTube and some guy will show you how to get your radio out. And then you go to installdoctor.com for the pin out on the back. So, we're going to do another one. Just to demonstrate the generality of the process. So here's the Saturn VU radio uh, uninstalled. You can see like it, they must have wanted you to buy the optional CD changer because it had the extra space. It's probably what it was for. Basic setup there's our plug on the back, and the wires like come out of it and go to another plug. That, but whatever. Um, Joey's playing with the light. And let's get this up apart. So, so here's the radio uh, out, and there's like a, there was a top panel and a little bottom panel, which is obviously convenient for us. And we're not going to take the CD changer part out, um, even though we probably could and still power it up. We did that on the Dodge Neon, and but uh, it's not in the way. Here's our little metal thing coming right from where the radio antenna goes in little metal tuners and then on the flip side here's the row of pins that you know so that's what we're looking for every time now what we got to do is get this thing powered up and hooked up to two speakers for testing so we got to get the pin out remember I've been going to installdoctor.com this one had that weird plug into another plug that plugs so we may have a little bit of a funky situation but we'll see what we find alright guys here we are hooked up Everything's hooked up to the pins that go where they need to go. I wound up just using colors on this plug to figure out what was what because the yellow and the solid big red are usually the two powers. And then we, of course, know that ground can go somewhere like that. And then we just had to find our left and right speakers using the balance 
Um, this radio wanted to like the computer wasn't too happy sometimes when I'm plugging in. I, I found out that this, this is a, basically a Chevrolet uh, style. Um, anyway, we're going to perform our little experiment now. All right, so we took our continuity meter and found which of the pins over there on the long column that go to the radio tuner were grounds. And Joey wrote it down on the note card. We just numbered them from the back of the front. And so now we're going to poke around. Okay, so on this radio, we only got one channel of sound. And I tried hooking up to three different speaker connections, actually four different speaker connections, even the ones right next to the power, you know, on the output. And I would only get one sound out. Only one pin would bring sound out of both of them. So, just remember, you want to try different grounds and different ones. You're going to get funky sound out of some of them. Make sure you can turn it up. And on this Chevrolet, there's a ground 8 from the back here, and then number 13 from the back made good sound. So we're just going to feed all the sound into that and then hook it up in the car and see how she sounds. All right, here we are in the Saturn V, um, and uh, the uh, sound on this thing was a little bit weird. Uh, most of these, when we plug in the the MP3 player, whatever you're using, it just takes over and it sounds pretty clean and clear, and it just drowns out the uh, the uh, radio station or any of that. But on this one, like you definitely get a better sound when you just go to a radio station that nothing's playing on. And uh, Joey's had one of those FM transmitters in here, and uh, he said it definitely sounds better than that. But, uh, I'm gonna turn it up. It's fine, you know, on that station, I guess. But, like, if I go to, uh, let's try. Picks up a little bit of trash there. Um, now, what you can do is right there um, on the uh, where the little metal box is the tuner you know and, and outputs the amplifier part of the radio you can disconnect that and send that through a switch so that you can switch to the mp3 player and, and, and connect one wire to it the amplifier part or connect the other wire to the amplifier part and you can put your little switch or something but uh, since we're getting sound that we're okay with we're fine with this and yes uh, we only connected to one channel and it went to all speakers on here and yes this is a Chevrolet type and that's all thank you for watching